Did you watch the 2024 Golden Globes? Well, I did, so you don't have to. On the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. I swear, there's just more to go to. Yeah. Well, yes, the greatest day for the most annoying people, the Golden Globes, an awards show where movie makers and celebrities alike come together to bribe 300 voters into giving them a trophy. For those that do not know, the Golden Globes has gone through some controversies over the past few years. Most notably, studios were found out to be giving luxury trips and gifts to the voters in order to secure a nomination at the awards. Most recently, voters threatened a boycott because they were not promised tickets into the venue of the awards. Instead, they were going to to be shifted into a side room with a television. This is kind of messed up considering the voters are the people that give these people the awards and they can't even get a seat in their house to watch those people win the awards. What? I'm not really sure if the voters ended up getting seats or not. The news didn't really update this story. On the red carpet, the most popular prop of the night was definitely Jacob Elordi's bath water scented candle inspired by the movie Saltburn. Rosamund Pike, Margot Robbie and America Ferreira all got a... With. Speaking of Margot Robbie, for those that do not know, Margot is recreating classic Barbie outfits on the red carpets during the promotional campaign for Barbie. On this red carpet, she is wearing an Armani gown inspired by superstar Barbie from 1977. We get an interview with Brie Larson who gets starstruck by Jennifer Lopez. No, I can't, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You this mean is... so much to me. Oh, you? oh my god. <laughs> I've been wanting to say it to you for a long time, so I'm really. Like... I did not think it was going to be right now. <laughs> if you're wondering where Jennifer Lopez's husband Ben Affleck was, he decided to dodge the red carpet to go inside early with his BFFL Matt Damon. We get an interview with Jennifer Lawrence, who is a massive Housewives fan. I mean, the real Housewives of Salt Lake City, I just want to give a shout out to the best finale I've ever seen on Can reality Can we talk TV. about it? Oh my god. God. She reacts to the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City finale where, spoiler alert, Monica is exposed to be a fan account a la Gossip Girl that was posting rumors and gossip about the other woman before she was casted on the show. One of the other housewives, Heather Gay, exposes her on the show and it is cinema. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything to prove that you are a f***ing bully and a Intro. Well done, Mama. And Jay Law agrees. The receipts, timelines, I got it all! And I was stone cold sober because I was starving for this event. Are you hungry right now? Not at all. Really? I'm so hungry. Well, you should probably eat. Bye, thanks. We didn't hit it off. We get an interview with the cast of The Bear. A reporter brings out a giant poster of Jeremy Allen White's shoot for Calvin Klein, and Ayo instantly puts it to one side. This is literally a work function. They are his co-workers. It's getting weird. We then get to the main show where Miss Incoming, Miss Incoming, our host for tonight's award, Joe Coy comes out to the stage to give his opening monologue. But before we get into it, please make sure to subscribe. Over 70% of people that watch my videos are not subscribed to me. At this rate, I could have that YouTube subscriber plaque hanging up on my wall, but no. You guys don't want me to find peace. He starts off his speech by saying this. And then they asked me if I saw every movie and every TV show, and then I said yes. I lied. You see, the joke is funny because it is really hard to watch everything that is nominated. While my family was out there and ringing in the new year, I, I was watching Oppenheimer. I loved Oppenheimer. I loved Oppenheimer. You see, the joke is funny because New Year's is fun and Oppenheimer is sad. I just, I just got one complaint. Needed another hour. <laughs> so I felt like it needed some more backstory. <laughs> this joke is relatively good. It's probably his best joke of the night. Oppenheimer is based on a 721-page Pulitzer Prize-winning book about the Manhattan Project. And Barbie is on a plastic doll with big boobies. <laughs> oh. uh, it's just not funny. I don't get why he thought people would laugh at this joke. I don't want you guys to think that I'm a creep, but it was kind of weird being attracted to a plastic doll. It's just something about your eyes, Ryan. 
This is probably his second best joke of the night. There is a punchline, it's just his timing is really bad. Before the punchline is given, he just sounds super creepy. The key moment in Barbie is when she goes from perfect beauty to bad breath, cellulite, and flat feet. Ah, or what casting directors call character actor. Oh. <laughs> Oh gosh, Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren are cringing. Selena Gomez is hiding her face in shame. Florence Pugh and Emma Stone are over it. And Ayo Adebari is too busy eating her food. Some I wrote, some other people wrote. Robert De Niro's here! Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. You got, you're kidding me, right? Slow down. I wrote some of these and they're the ones you're laughing at. Look. Oh, that's no. in the sense that no. You know. Firstly, I don't believe you. And secondly, committing to the job is to remain professional. If you were bombing, you can't just throw the other writers under the bus. It is you that is up there telling the jokes. If they do not land, you can't just turn around and go, that wasn't my joke. All of the jokes that you were laughing at, I wrote. These ones, not mine. I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? 10 days is a long time. How many days do you need to write a funny joke? Are you trying to instigate another writer's strike? Joe then brings up one of the messiest moments of 2023 mentioned in my 2023 rewind video if you want to go check that one out. Your last performance has got to be your greatest performance ever. How'd you get her pregnant at 80? Well, yes, Robert De Niro did decide to become a father again at 80 years old. Joe was in really proud of himself for watching Saltburn. I watch Saltburn. I watch Saltburn. I watch Saltburn. Barry Keoghan here is Barry Keoghan. Where's Barry Keoghan seated? Where are you? Where, oh, oh, right there. Where's your penis seated? After talking about penis, he talks about a movie with a lack of penis. And then right after that, watch Barbie. And then you're gonna be like, something. Something's missing. Oh. <laughs> Joe then jokes about the color purple. All in the color purple. Why would you keep this joke in knowing that Daniel Brooks is wearing red front and center? Like, could you have not made a joke about that? By the way, the color purple is also what happens to your butt when you take Ozempic. <laughs> I'm sure as soon as he brought up Ozempic, half the room was shaking that they were gonna be singled out. How many people were scared? <laughs> Me too. I was really, really scared. Joe then jokes about succession. The one thing that this show taught me is if you're a billionaire, pull out. <laughs> Joe makes a joke about the crown and once again throws the writers under the bus. Her portrayal of the queen was so good, Prince Harry called her for it and asked her for money. Like I said, I didn't write all these. He then butchers the title of Only Murders in the Building. Only Murders in the Building? He then talks about Meryl Streep and she gets so embarrassed, she knows that she's gonna have to provide the performance of a lifetime, playing the role of audience member laughing. Meryl Streep is nominated for a Golden Globe tonight. <laughs> Duh. The comedic timing is so off. He then makes Meryl do Wakanda forever, and then he leaves us with this final joke. Beloved by the people she rules over, a regal queen. Oprah, it's not about you. It's not, it's not you. It's a, it's a different queen. It's, it's Angela Bassett. Well... Joe Coy later told Variety that he is not too sure if he would host again if he was asked. Don't worry, they won't. Jared Leto and Angela Bassett then come out to the stage. Jared Leto does a bit where he was method acting for weeks, preparing for his role as Jared Leto presenting an award. I've been in presenter mode for weeks now, mm -hmm. I have to say. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's so funny. They present the award for Best Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture. The nominees are Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks, The Color Purple, Jodie Foster, Nyad, Julianne Moore, May December, Rosamund Pike, Saltburn, and Dave Vine, Joy Randolph, The Holdovers. Before they reveal the winner, Jared Leto spoils it. Goodbye. Dave Vine, Joy Randolph wins. They then present the award for Best Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture. The nominees are William Defoe, Poor Things, Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr., Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, Charles Melton, 
Me December, and Mark Ruffalo, Poor Things. Robert Downey Jr. wins. I took a beta blocker, so this is gonna be a breeze. Well, well yes, yeah. Robert Downey Jr.'s acceptance speech got more laughs than Joe Coy's opening monologue. While heading into the commercial break, we get a shot of Selena Gomez talking to Taylor Swift, and Taylor seems pretty shocked by what she said. Twitter went crazy trying to figure out what they were talking about, and the most popular theory is that Selena Gomez asked Timothy Chalamet for a photo, and Kylie Jenner, his girlfriend, said no. This is based on Kelly Taylor mouthing Timothy? After the show, Timothy was questioned by TMZ about whether there's beef between Kylie and Selena, and he was pretty coy. Can you shut down the rumors? Would you ever deny Selena a photo? Is it ridiculous? No? Selena Gomez then later responded saying, No, I told Taylor about two of my friends who hooked up. Not that that's anyone's business. A source also said that Selena never even crossed paths with Timothy and Kylie at that night. Even if this is what happened, some of you are gonna hate me for this, but I'm Team Kylie. What? All of these people are media savvy and know what happens when young, hot celebrities take photos with each other, people online ship them, and media publications bring up rumors and gossip about them having an affair or a romance. Kylie would 100% know that if Timothy and Selena took a photo together, next day's headlines would be, Selena and Timothy cuddling up together. What does Kylie think? Did Timothy break up with Kylie? Is Timothy having an affair on Kylie Jenner? Kylie would most likely be protecting her peace. Ultimately, yes, it is rude to forbid two people from taking a photo with each other, but in celebrity world, everything is observed and talked about. It would do more harm than good. Coming back from the commercial break, Joe Coy makes a joke about Taylor Swift. Uh, the big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, on the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. I swear, there's just more to go to here. Joe later clarified in an interview that it was meant to be more of a dig at the NFL for constantly showing shots of Taylor at the games, and the Golden Globes didn't need to do that. Um, we understood the joke, it just wasn't funny. Also, what do you mean the Golden Globes don't need to show shots of Taylor Swift? Why would they invite her then? Let's be real, the Golden Globes made up some random box office achievement award to get the cast of Barbie and Taylor Swift to show up at the Golden Globes, so of course they're gonna show shots of them. Orlando Bloom and Amanda Seyfried then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Actress in a Limited Series, Anthology Series, or Motion Picture Made for Television. The nominees are Riley Keough, Daisy Jones and the Six, Brie Larson, Lessons in Chemistry, Elizabeth Olsen, Love and Death, Juno Temple, Fargo, Rachel Weisz, Dead Ringers, and Ali Wong, Beef. Ali Wong wins. Hunter Schaefer and Chriselle's husband come out to the stage to present the award for Best Actor in a Limited Series, Anthology Series, or Motion Picture Made for Television. The nominees are Matt Bomer, Fellow Travelers, Sam Claflin, Daisy Jones and the Six, John Hamm, Fargo, Woody Harrelson, White House Plumbers, David Oyelolo, Lawman, Bass Reeves, and Stephen Yon, Beef. Stephen Yon wins. Jonathan Bailey and Julia Garner then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Supporting Actress in a Limited Series Anthology. So, uh, you you know what I'm gonna say. The nominees. Elizabeth Debicki. The Crown. Well, well yes. yes, the Hollywood foreign press could not contain their excitement about Elizabeth Debicki that they interrupted Julia Garner. The nominees for Best Performance. Elizabeth by... Debicki. The Crown. The nominees are Elizabeth Debicki, The Crown, Abby Elliott, The Bear, Christina Ricci, Yellow Jackets, J. Smith Cameron, Succession, Meryl Streep, Only Murders in the Building, and Hannah Waddingham, Ted Lasso, giving us drama. Elizabeth Debicki wins. Kerry Russell and Ray Romano then come out to the stage. I've been a fan of yours for a long time, but when I saw you on The Americans, blown away. And, um, I loved, um... <laughs> well, just everything you just said. They then present the award for Best Supporting Actor in the limited series and th uh, you know the rest. The nominees are Billy Crudup, The Morning Show, Matthew McFedian, Succession, James Marsden, Jury Duty, Ebon Moss, Backrack, The Bear, Alan Ruck, Succession, and Alexander Skarsgård, Succession. Matthew McFedian wins. Coming back from the commercial break, Joe Coy says this. This year, the Golden Globes wanted to honor my culture. For, so for the first time, they served sushi. And I just want to say, I'm Filipino. 
we cook our fish. Calling all Filipino watchers. What do we think of this joke? Shamik Moore, Haley Steinfeld, and Daniel Kaluuya then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Screenplay. They do this bit where they ask for their lines to be written by studio executives instead of writers because, you know, the writers' jobs are not that hard. What is up, Shamik? <laughs> not much, Daniel. How are you, Haley? I am relatable. I am enjoy the Golden Globs. Here are these nominations for movie writing for the movies. The nominees are Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach, Barbie, Tony McNamara, Poor Things, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Eric Roth and Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Celine Song, Past Lives, and Justine Trier and Arthur Harari, Anatomy of a Fall. Justine Trier and Arthur Harari win. George Lopez and Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Actor in a Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. The nominees are Bill Hader, Barry, Steve Martin, Only Murders in the Building, Jason Segel, Shrinking, Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building, Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso, and Jeremy Allen White, The Bear. Jeremy Allen White wins. Jim Gaffigan comes out to the stage to present the award for best performance in a stand-up comedy on television. I'm not a file. The nominees are Ricky Gervais, Armageddon, Trevor Noah, Where Was I, Chris Rock, Selective Outrage, Amy Schumer, Emergency Contact, Sarah Silverman, Someone You Love, and Wanda Sykes, I'm an Entertainer. Ricky Gervais wins, but he couldn't be there in person, so Jim accepts the award on his behalf. Rose McIver and Utkash and Budka then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Motion Picture Non-English Language. The nominees are Anatomy of a Fall, Fallen Leaves, Io Capitano, Past Lives, Society of the Snow, and The Zone of Interest. Anatomy of a Fall wins. Kevin Costner and America Ferreira then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Actress in a Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. The nominees are Rachel Brosnahan, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Quinta Brunson, Abbott Elementary, Ayo Adebiri, The Bear, Al Fanning, The Great, Selena Gomez, Only Murders in the Building, and Natasha Leone, Poker Face. Ayo Adebiri wins and Selena Gomez is very happy about it. She ends her speech in the same way as that Emma Chamberlain speech. If I forgot to thank you, I'm sorry. Unless you were mean or something. Okay, bye, thank you. I just want to say thank you guys for being so welcoming, because I'm new, you know? Um, it's been great. Thanks, I guess. I love you, Mom and Dad. Kevin and America then present the award for Best Actor in a Television Series Drama. The nominees are Brian Cox, Succession, Karen Culkin, Succession, Gary Oldman, Slow Horses, Pedro Pascal, The Last of Us, Jeremy Strong, Succession, and Dominic West, The Crown. Karen Culkin wins just playing his character of Roman. Sorry, burping, indigestion. Suck it, Pedro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. Um. <laughs> Coming back from the commercial break, Joe Coy makes a joke about his blazer. I just want to shout out my suit. It's velvet. I told my stylist I don't wear velvet, and then he gave it to me, and I'm like, oh my god, that looks good. I'm gonna keep it. Where are the jokes. This used to be a couch, now it's a suit. Natalie Portman and Florence Pugh then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Motion Picture Animated. If you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? The nominees are The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, The Super Mario Brothers Movie, Suzume, and Wish. The Boy and the Heron win. BFFL's Matt Damon and Ben Affleck then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Director. The nominees are Bradley Cooper, Maestro, Greta Gerwig, Barbie, Yogo Lanthimos, Poor Things, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Celine Song, Past Lives. Christopher Nolan wins. Michelle Yeoh and Naomi Watson come out to the stage. Michelle references her acceptance speech from the year prior. I know last year I threatened to beat up the piano player if they tried to play me off my speech, my acceptance speech. They then present the award for Best Actress in a Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy. 
The nominees are Fantasia Barino, The Color Purple, Jennifer Lawrence, No Hard Feelings. While the camera is on Jennifer, you can see her mouthing, if I don't win, I'm leaving. Natalie Portman, May December, Alma Posty, Fallen Leaves, Margot Robbie, Barbie, and Emma Stone, Poor Things. Emma Stone wins, J-Law is so excited, and while heading up to the stage, Emma Stone is doing such an Emma Stone behavior. <laughs> Gosh, something wrong here. <laughs> I love getting to horrify you with my Australian accent. You're the best, tiny. You know, I'm just working on that all the time. Michelle and Naomi then present the award for Best Actor in a Motion Picture, Drama. The nominees are Bradley Cooper, Maestro, Leonardo DiCaprio, Killers of the Flower Moon, Coleman Domingo, Rustin, Barry Keoghan, Saltburn, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, and Andrew Scott, All of Us Strangers. Killian Murphy wins. First question, do I have lipstick all over my nose? Uh, I'm just gonna leave it. During his acceptance speech, he brings up how Christopher Nolan hates chairs. The complete lack of any seating options for actors. <laughs> Coming back from the commercial break, Joe Coy introduces the next two presenters out to the stage. He has lost all of his confidence. He did not crack a single joke. John Batiste and Andrew Day then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Original Score. The nominees are Poor Things, Oppenheimer, The Boy and the Heron, the Zone of Interest, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and Killers of the Flower Moon. Oppenheimer wins. John and Andrew then come back out to the stage to present the award for Best Original Song. These two are kikiing. Choreo. It's choreo. <laughs> oh, choreo. <laughs> Andrew says this. Music can take you anywhere. It took me from singing in a strip Mall, yes, that's a mall, sorry. Okay. No! Strip mall. Yes, who? <laughs> the nominees are Addicted to Romance, Dance the Night, I'm Just Ken, Peaches, Road to Freedom, and What Was I Made For? What Was I Made For wins. The narrator only introduces Billy to the stage, even though Phineas is right next to her. Accepting the award is Billy Eilish O'Connell. Oh, go and join me. Billy is serving Bayonetta Giselle in The Devil Wears Prada realness. Mark Hamill then comes out to the stage to present the award for cinematic and box office achievement. During his presenting, you can hear a busboy clearing up empty glasses on a table. Just for their popularity, but for the high caliber. The nominees are Barbie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, John Wick Chapter 4, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Oppenheimer, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the Super Mario Brothers movie, and Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour. Barbie wins and all of the lights turn pink. Simu Liu and Issa Rae then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Limited Series, Anthology Series, or Motion Picture Made for Television. The nominees are All the Light We Cannot See, Beef, Daisy Jones and the Six, Fargo, Fellow Travelers, and Lessons in Chemistry. Issa then tries to scare some pescatarians. Beef! Simu and Issa then come back out to the stage, but Issa does not know which camera to look at. This is, I think it's this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> they then present the award for Best Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. The nominees are Abbott Elementary, Barry, The Bear, Jury Duty, Only Murders in the Building, and Ted Lasso. The bear wins. Joe Coy then gives us another non-joke. Quick announcement. You guys are so selfish. It's Nicholas Bur It's Nicholas Cage's birthday today. How dare you just think about yourselves. I can't tell whether Joe changed what he was initially going to say because he lost confidence or whether this was what he was always going to say and just thought it was funny. Effie Trinket and Joanna Mason then come out to the stage. Elizabeth Banks talks about the Australian accent. That's, the, that's kind of the accent everyone wants, you know, it's a whimsical mix of high and low class. Alright, alright, alright. They then present the award for Best Actress Television Series Drama. The nominees are Helen Mirren, 1923. Bella Ramsey, The Last of Us, Kerry Russell, The Diplomat, Sarah Snook, Succession, Amanda Staunton, The Crown, and Emma Stone, The Curse. 
Sarah Snook wins. After each person's win, they go to this room to be photographed and interviewed by the press. During Sarah's time, she does not get a single question. And one more for Sarah? Don't all rush at once. <laughs> all right, thank you. We're going to bring up Karen Culkin next. Thank you, Sarah. Congratulations. <laughs> The cast of Suits then comes out to the stage. Why has Patrick J. Adams not initiated a Pretty Little Liars reunion? They then present the award for Best Television Series Drama. The nominees are 1923, The Crown, The Diplomat, The Last of Us, The Morning Show, and Succession. Succession wins. Heading into the commercial break, they show a shot of Timmy and Kylie kissing. Will Ferrell and Kristen Wiig then come out to the stage to present the award for best actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. During their presenting, they keep on getting interrupted by the monkey spinning audio. How much a laugh can... It's funny, but not really that funny compared to their other appearances at the Golden Globes. What does that say? Mar I don't... Mariel. Mariel, Mariel Street. Mariel Street. Mariel Street. Hope, Hope Springs, Springs, and oh she's gosh, the she sassy, she sheriff. She's that sassy sheriff. Sheriff. I'm, I'm Hope Springs. And, oh, oh, Southern, that accent. The nominees are Nicolas Cage, Dream Scenario, Timothy Chalamet, Wonka, Matt Damon, Air, Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, Joaquin Phoenix, Bo is Afraid, and Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction. Before the winner is revealed, Will Ferrell says this. It smells like hot sushi in here. <laughs> Am I the only one, right? No, it's yeah, hot. it's hot. It's like hot sushi. Paul Giamatti wins. Annette Benning and Jodie Foster then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy. The nominees are Air, American Fiction, Barbie, The Holdovers, May December, and Poor Things. Poor Things wins. Joe Coy comes out to the stage again to introduce the next presenter. No joke given. Damn! It's quiet. Yeah, no, right. it's quiet for him. Don Cheadle and Kate Beckinsale then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Actress in a Motion Picture Drama. The nominees are Annette Benning, Nyad, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Hula, Anatomy of a Fall, Greta Lee, Past Lives, Carrie Mulligan, Maestro, and Kaylee Spaney, Priscilla. Lily Gladstone wins and speaks some Blackfeet language. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey then comes out to the stage to present the award for Best Motion Picture Drama. The nominees are Anatomy of a Fall, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, and The Zone of Interest. Oppenheimer wins. That wraps our show, everybody. I hope you guys had a good night. Hollywood is back. And that is the end of the 2024 Golden Globes. What a hot mess. A reminder that I have a Patreon where I am posting exclusive content right now. I have a video up on the 2011 VMA pre-show as well as the 2009 VMA pre-show. They are both utter messes. Click the link right here to go subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below telling me which award show I should cover next. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, please. And heck, why not share with your friends? And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.